Hi, ladies and gentlemen, Eddie Marcus here. How many of you thought or perhaps imagined that at this day and time that we would be stuck as we are? Many of you have thought perhaps that we'd be sailing on beyond the rainbows because our imagination would have taken us that far and life would have been just a progression of love. But to find ourselves sitting here in the midst of this where many of you in your lifetime never thought, even though history has indicated uh, the character of the people, human beings, I just won't say of this nation, I'll say human beings everywhere. But more specifically here, we've seen the character and we've seen the efforts that have been made to move on and how the string of holes still remains. It doesn't matter how often, how much you give trying to make that change. There's another, another force just as equally demanding that you go nowhere. So you got pain and you got suffering, a continued way of life, which to me is an expression of the anti-life, anti-life, anti-love. And if you want to say anything about God, say anti-God. <clears throat> How many of you thought that you would have, in this day and age, a Supreme Court, nine justices, I think, who are supposed to be able to interpret laws, rules, and regulations that have been established by Congress, and as they pertain to the Constitution? They, these people, supposedly are held above all other human beings in America. What they say counts. And then you get a recognition of this ability until this anti-force ends up stacking positions of power to be able to manipulate and do as they choose to impose as they would. How many of you ever thought that you would have three justices appointed by a racist bigot, liar, all the th other things you can think of, put there. And then perhaps even a black one, because it seems every time you find somebody messing over somebody, there's going to be another representation there in, here in America, so they won't say it was racist because it had black and white working together. I'm not saying this is what's going to happen, but I'm saying this is something we must think about. Why? Because this is the character of America. Things like this can happen. We just saw January 6th. We saw, if you want to back it back a little bit, what happened to George Floyd. A joke how they made of this brother's life. And of locking a man up in jail and giving the family some money and promising that you're going to do something within the system, but nothing happens. That tells me nothing's changed. So, <clears throat> I look at today. I look at the problems that we're having. I look at the proposed solutions like making artificial intelligence to say we don't need you already. They want to abuse you by working uh, daylights out of you and paying you as little as they possibly can and now they want to make a substitute for you. What does that? What do you think that means for you? Uh, they wouldn't go that far. Hey, you see what they're doing today. They're trying to take us back in the efforts of calling themselves making America great is when you put one particular power and what in this case is white power. And everybody's got to be subordinate to it. I guess they say well, they did it under the kings, they did it under the queens, they did it under the pharaohs, they did it under the Caesars. So they will do it under those who are willing to take your life if you don't. And that's the path that we're on. But I say to you, America, and I say to the people of the world, if you're listening, we have tried all of our lives. And as far back as we can go, perhaps through studies or listening to other voices. We've always exist under this type of tyranny. We've always exist locked out of God's plan. The word was left out of God's plan. So I propose to all of us today, when we see what's happening about people just killing folks to make people do what they want done, like what is happening in Russia and what they're trying to do to, to, to do to the Ukrainians. 
When we think about what was a tried, what was attempted here in the United States of America under the leader, a lessless leadership of Donald Trump, when you see what's happening, when you see the people buying into lies, when you see people running for office on, li on lying, they don't even care. They say, I'm a liar. Vote for me. And the people voting for him. That's how far we've come. If we were ever anywhere close to being righteous, we have come this far away from it. So let's stop. Ask God, say us, what would it be like if we flip the script? Why don't we give God's way a chance? I'm serious. Why don't we give God's way? And when, oh, I know somebody just said, who's God? I'm talking about the God that is God. I'm not talking about the jive turkey that's been sitting around watching everything happen every day and got his people that's falling in, falling suit. No, I'm talking about a God that says the power is in your hands. The power is in your hands. You've got to make a choice. You've made some choices with some crazy God. I want to tell you about a God of love. A God that claims every last one of you, regardless of whom you might have been rejected by, I want you to know a God that claims every last one of you, loves every last one of you, prepared for every last one of you, that you might be as children of God living here on this earth, on a playground, really, because the things that you're going to do here, the games that you're going to play, have been already designed in you. And by expressing that, it gives you your greatest joy, your greatest pleasure. And it just so happens to be that what you're doing is connected to all the other things that are being done to create a manifestation of all the goods and services that you, the people, have determined are absolutely essential for your heavenliness. That's God's way. So all of the things that exist belong to all of the people. For you to access, when you go in your house and you want to put on some shoes, you go put them on. Or you want to go change clothes, you go do that. This is so, This is life. When you want to change cars, you change cars. When you want to travel from a plane, a boat, you do it. Why? Because this is your playground. You have allowed the spirit of the living God to live inside of you. And what you are doing are expressing God's love for one another, using each of us to cause a manifestation of that love. Plain as daylight. We ought to give God a chance. You won't have no bills. You won't be suffering for lack of pain or because of pain and other things that have caused you suffering. Why? Because we would have fixed the situation. You know most of the problems that we engage ourselves in or, or find ourselves victim of are created by we, the people, even if it's the system. We have approved the system, and the system creates their problems, but rather than fix it, they make you think that, hey, it's something that happens, so we can create some jobs over here for you. So you're continuously creating this hell, trying to put a bandage on and pretending like you're doing something by giving somebody this part of the money to keep the system running just like it is. With picket signs saying you fed up with this, out there protesting this, here and there, that's okay. It's, made, it's a statement. It's a statement about how you feel. But that is not the kind of movement that's going to cause things to happen. The things that will cause things to happen when you wake up and realize, yes, there is that might just be a God. And why don't you take a chance? You'll go to the military and put a gun in your hand and go kill people if, you, if you're told to. So why don't you take a chance on this loving God, this loving God? Take a chance on being a part of that uh, government, that part of that system that you are going in. And, and, and this God does not pass, just allow you to make your own choices. And when you make your own choices, there might be things that happen in nature you think might be coming from God. Look at floods. Look at earthquakes. Look how people are being destroyed. Properties are, are being destroyed. For what? You've got to start all over. Insurance companies are not sufficient to deal with all this kind of stuff, so they make some other games that be played when you can be doing life. That means when you're educating yourself, you want to become the best that you can possibly be at what you already love doing. And the things that you do last. They don't be falling down. You got to keep on doing this. Keep on doing that, baby. Life was made to be lived. And that's to do what you do and enjoy the creation. Now, I just thought I'd share that with you. Because I'm thinking about this pain that I have to go through. I got to go back here on this cold day and work on this car. Because I was abused by a system that says, 
if you don't know, and these people do, they can exploit you. And if you can't, if you don't have money enough to buy a legal horse to speak for you and tie them up, then, oops, sorry about that. <laughs> no, ladies and gentlemen, I should have no, everybody who just heard what I got through explaining to you about this God of love. You ought to be shouting. You ought to be saying, thank God Almighty, you finally heard it. And you've been waiting. And now that you have, you are ready. And you're going to engage yourselves in walking tall like you are somebody. You ain't belittling nobody because we know that we are all one. Every last one of us got that same blood that's running through us. We breathe that same air. Oh, I'm telling you, we got even the same identical parts. When I say I, I'm talking about we got those necessary parts to, to be a human. My, 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 my. And that breath of life. And we all come here through our mother's womb. Ooh-wee. This is magnificent. We should really be celebrating today because the end of the hell is becoming now. Because you are making the choice. You are making the decision that you're going to be a love light to the world. You're going to be a love letter to the world. You're going to stand and not bend for what is right so that ugliness and darkness can see itself for what it really is. Why? Because it's standing up to the light. Standing up to the light. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you so very much for giving me this your time. I hope I spoke loud enough for you to hear this without having to chase your mics up so high. But in the meantime, until next time, this is Eddie Mark, a spokesman and advocate of basic human rights for all people. And I declare as long as I'm living, I'm going to tell you about this God. Because this God is worth being talked about. And I talk to you about this God because all these other gods can't stand up to it. All these other gods say it's okay for you to suffer and go through pain. This God says you can choose that and go through it if you want to. But it is not God's desire. Because God's desire that you... Until next time.